the chat is the link to um, the tech and innovation page. That's where these resources uh, live. And of course, when the tech person goes to present the screen, it always takes a little bit longer here to do that. Are you seeing that screen already for the tech and innovation page? Yes. Awesome, thank you, Ali. So again, um, today's all about looking at how can we unlock some awesome options within iTime. iTime, obviously for newer staff, is an option to have an intervention time. It's a lot like differentiated instruction when you have an opportunity to um, share out some resources. Maybe it's one of those learning targets that's particularly tricky. Maybe it's one that you know is a common stumble for kids in the section that you're teaching. And today's looking at really about how can we design that and how can that look and done easily? Because we also know that distance learning is taxing on time. And one of the things that I've shared out here in the tech and innovation page is an intervention template example. And I'm just going to click into that. And what that's going to do is it's going to force me to make a copy um, into that. And while that's making a copy, I'm just going to show the example here from facts. I had a chance this summer to design what hybrid or distance learning might look like in family and consumer science. And the page that I have listed here is one for a, a unit in culinary arts under the learning target for demonstrating professional knife skills. And I know as teachers that we always have an abundance of resources. And oftentimes we find ourselves with more resources than we have time. And this is a chance for us to really think about which resources do I wanna recast? Which ones do I want to kind of shuffle and organize. For example, this morning I was working in a CT with SEMS and they said they're already excited about this try to be able to repackage the work then to use in second or in third try for use of an intervention. So we might take that same approach when we're doing that. So again, just keeping a simple uh, document here, describing quickly what the name of the course is, uh, what the learning target is, and then taking a quick screenshot and adding some text to the first resource. So again, I think it's about boiling down, like what do you what do you need the kid to show proficiency and to move forward in that unit um, to get to that next um, benchmark, to get to have them feel prepared for the next learning target or even the next standard. Um, so here you're gonna notice um, just a lot of screenshots, a lot of hyperlinks, and this is uh, really easy uh, to create. In fact, when you click into that template, when you do make a copy of it, as you're going to see here, this is waiting for you. So I'm not, you know, you don't have to type in all this information. You can just add to it. So if this is your Spanish 2A course, or let's do Spanish 2B is probably what you're in, is to give that a name of a course here and then emphasize what is your learning target one that you want to, um, share out here and then what's that first uh screenshot of a resource so if you're going to go to use a podcast from maybe coffee break spanish and that's a resource that you want to uh, share with your kiddos then maybe make a screenshot of that uh, when you check into that um when you check into that resource so here, for example, well, I'll just, it'll probably go easier if I just Google it. Coffee Break Spanish Season 1. Of course, I'm using this as a resource because Allie's on the call. But um, again, you just maybe want to take a screenshot of that resource. For me, on a teacher device, it's going to be a function and then the right shift key to be able to do that. And I can just grab a picture of that resource that I want to add into that. So again, really easy then to insert the image, grab it as a screenshot, or you could copy and paste it too. And then what's even, you know, also nice is now you can hyperlink that image. So every time a kid clicks on it, 
Now that's going to send them somewhere. So it's going to ask for, hey, what's the link that you want to send the kid to? Well, just copy that resource and now hyperlink that in. So when you click apply, now when the kiddo clicks on it, it's going to say, hey, send me to this uh, website. And now you want to give the instructions. So again, this is for you and your CT to decide, hey, what do I want kids to do to interact with that resource? So this is when you would just enter that text. And again, I would really encourage you to um, share this with your CT or across the district, of course, in your case, is to be thinking about finding the other Spanish 2B teachers and just sharing this out as a resource once it's designed because these can be so easily uh, shared out. So there's no recipe for success here. It's about figuring out what's gonna work best in your context and then sharing out, okay, here's, Here's a quick image that I can use from a screenshot. Here's the hyperlink to the resource and some text that I can share to kind of steer, uh, steer how that goes along the way. On the bottom of the example that I shared out, I'm giving you some reminders here of how do you do a screenshot? I'm sure a lot of us are using these frequently in distance learning. And then really inserting tables is gonna be one of your best friends. It's really nice to organize information quickly by just clicking in any Google Doc, insert table, and then deciding how many spaces do you want, and maybe deciding, hey, this is where I want to have the image. This is where I want to have my text that supports that along the way. So that's really, that's really easy to work around um, that way. Another one of those resources that I have, um, after a couple of resources, uh, is the Flipgrid response. So here I'm asking kids in this Flipgrid reply to just share what lingering questions do you have? And this, again, might be one of those ways for you to decide what is the kid tripping up on uh, walking into uh, that next option. Maybe it's another take on the same summative assessment, uh, whatever it may be. So here I'm asking kids to reply on that Flipgrid with what do you notice about the resources about knife cuts? And then the second one is, what two questions do you still have as we approach that next summative assessment? Now in culinary arts too, it's obviously a vegetable stock prep uh, in the example that I had shared. But again, this might look in a, a number of ways. How can we offer kids an opportunity to showcase mastery uh, and still stay on track for the course and still continue to support our learners along the way? Uh, and then the last piece on this example here I have is a check-in. And that check-in is a chance for you. Again, Ali, you had mentioned just before we started the conference session was um, you are, you know, pinging kids and asking them to meet you at the, the meet at that time. This might be the chance for you to say, okay, now that you've had a chance to have that second scoop of learning, a recast of learning, now uh, let's see where you're at. Let's get a pulse of your learning to make sure that you're ready to go on to that second attempt to the summative or whatever it is that your CT decides that is evidence of learning, however however you choose moving forward. So these are some really quick uh, strategies. To, these are all tools that are very familiar to teachers in Anoka Hennepin schools, Google Docs, housing those units in Drive, having a, a chance for kids to reply to a Flipgrid and then checking in with them. Maybe it's on a calendar appointment live. Maybe it's having kids share out a Google slide presentation on their vegetable stock, or maybe it's a live Google meet with a partner activity and in interpersonal in Spanish to be. Whatever the case may be, this is an opportunity for kids to have a second scoop of learning and another attempt at that uh, summative assessment. So those are, those are really um, some easy tools that we can use to recast to kids to have them show um, evidence of learning. Um, I wanna quickly share out that video again that Tony uh, had Tony had made on this. Uh, I'm gonna just dump this in the browser here and hopefully, let's see, 358 is when he pulls in with the information about iTime. Allie, can you let me know if you can hear the audio uh, once it comes up? Can you just let me know if you're hearing that on your side? Link ready. So now we have a polished link ready. We can. Are you able to hear that already? Yes. 
perfect. And we can yeah. sit out through classroom, but we can also, that can also be the invitation in iTime that you send out. So here's Tony. Here's the instructions from Tony about how to set that up in iTime. So now that you have an agenda that's been created, how can you push that out to kids? Certainly you can do it by email. Certainly you can do it um, by, you know, sending the instructions out in Google Classroom, which I'm gonna show you how to do that to a specific number of kids. Um, but here's the instructions from Tony about how to do that in iTime. With that information also. How about you have that intervention created? Copy the link. So it looks like to me that that field is called an online link for kids to be able to access that agenda from Tony. Add it to your iTime session. So remember to save. So again, that's a really quick way to do that. I also want to show in um, in Google Classroom, for example, if I were to create an iTime uh, example of a link here and I can share that out with kids. Let me just quick copy the link. Where grammar and spelling are important. Looks like I still have my YouTube on here. Copying the link, adding it into the Google Classroom agenda that I would push out to kids. And again, instead of selecting to all kids, maybe I would um, send it out to specific kids. So here, this is not the best example because this is a student group that where the students are listed as teachers. Um, but here you would see all of your students listed and you would just mark a little check next to the six kids that need that second attempt to that learning target or that second scoop of learning. So that's a little bit about how we can create an, uh, an example of uh, an agenda. The three resources you'll see waiting for you at the Tech and Innovation site. Here's an example. The tutorial is me kind of walking people through a very similar set of instructions. And then that template is ready for you to uh, make a copy in Google Drive uh, and be able to um, quickly create that copy that works for your context. What questions come up, if any? Let me, let me scan the large crowd here.